So in the last video, we got started on matching physics and the animation. But if I wanted to move while I'm in the air, if I press forward after I jump, nothing happens. Because if I go take a look at the animator, look at jump, and look at jump abilities, this script, all it does is add upward force. There's nothing else. So if I go back, accept play mode, and if I add another slot to the jump abilities and add move forward, so now we have the upward force, the ground detector, and the movement. If I click play, jump and press forward, we get the same speed as the walk animation, which might be okay, but I want a little more detailed movement, so I'm gonna quit. Click here, control D to duplicate, and I'm going to name this jump normal move forward. So I'm going to have a separate ability, separate movement ability for jump, and I could just change the variable here, but that's not what I want. I'm going to go into the code. I'm going to create another variable called animation curve and call it speed graph. Save and go back. If I go to the states and look at the move forward and jump move forward, we now see a graph here and we can set it to whatever we want. There's some presets here. For move forward, I want this to be a straight line. Whereas for jump, I want this to be a gradual increase. I'm gonna go in and fix the code. So instead of just multiplying the speed, I'm gonna multiply the value that we get from the graph. Speed graph, value eight, and the time is gonna be based on the animation time. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. Okay, now that the code is fixed, if I go back, click play, and see what happens. So nothing changes for walking. Oh, we haven't changed. We haven't switched the ability yet. Let me go back and switch this to jump instead of walk. So for jump, we have a gradual increase in speed, whereas for walk, it's just walk. It's a subtle difference. If I look at move forward and change this to something like the gradual increase, you see how the character speeds up as he starts walking. So play around with the graph, see what you like. I'm just gonna switch walk back to normal. And I would like to have one more change. We have the ground detectors, but I also want detectors that detect the front part of the collider. So let me quit. I'm gonna to go to character control. And remember what we did with the bottom spheres. I'm gonna create something called top front and create an edge sphere. The location is gonna be zero for X, top and front. We already have bottom front. So for the front part, I'm gonna use this and this. I'm going to go up and create a new list called front spheres. And it's basically going to be the same thing. I'm going to go down. I'm going to add the bottom front. And I'm also going to add top front. And I want to replicate what we did with the bottom spheres. So I'm going to create a function just for that. Create middle spheres. And I'm going to copy paste this part into the function. And we want the start to finish with the section length and the number of iterations. So this is start. 
Oh, we don't need finish, we just need the direction. So this is going to be the direction. We already have the section variable and the number of iterations can be changeable here. We also want the list that we want to put those things in. Spheres list. So instead of doing all this, I could say create middle spheres, start at the bottom front, direction is going to be forward, we already have the section length, and we want to do it four times. And we want to add them all to the bottom spheres list. So if I run the code, nothing's going to change. Looks like I got the directions wrong. So it's just the opposite direction. And I just want to do the same thing with the front part. I forgot to add top front as a child. And I do exactly the same thing that I did here. So it's a vertical section. This is horizontal section. And I could just copy paste and change a few things. I'm going to start at the bottom, but I want to end at top front. And because the height is bigger than the width, I want it into 10 different sections. And I want to do it nine times. And you want to go up. And instead of horizontal section, we want vertical section. That should do it. Let me go check. Okay. So we have the edge of the front colliders here and the bottom ones here. This one sphere in the corner is shared by both of the lists, but I think it's going to be fine. Oh, wait. I think I added the front spheres into the wrong list. Okay, this should be front spheres. Okay, let me go check again. So right now the ray cast is only coming out of the bottom spheres. And we want to do this for the front. Quit. I'm going to go look for the ground detector code. Here it is. And the front detecting script is going to be very similar. I'm going to copy. I'm going to go into move forward, paste it and change it a little bit, check front, and we're not going to be looking at velocity, so get rid of that, and we're going to be looking at the front spheres, and you want to shoot the ray cast forward, so look at character controls forward, debugging should be shorter maybe 0 0.3. Again, change the direction here. And we want to create a new variable called, I'm going to call it block distance. And that's going to replace this. I'm going to go to the update. And every time the character tries to move, we want to check front. Okay, put this in there. And we only want to move when check front is false, meaning when there's nothing in front. And same thing here. If check front is false, then we move. Go back to Unity, go to states, move forward. And I'm going to change the block distance to 0 0.1 for now. 
we're going to change this later. And same thing with jump, just 0 0.1 and click play. Right now there's nothing in front of the player, so it's just not going to stop. I want to add some obstacles later because I think we have some critical bugs. You can't go from walking to jumping, you have to go to idle first. That is because we don't have a transition between walk to jump. So exit play mode, we're going to fix that. Create a transition from walk to here. And we're not going to need the exit time. And I want this transition to be quick. So make it short. And the condition is going to be jump. I'm going to go to the move script, move forward. And here I'm going to say if control says jump, then I want the animator to switch to jump. Let's go back and play. So now we can go into the jump animation while we're walking. Another critical bug, once you go into landing, let me look for the landing script. You shouldn't be moving anymore once you land, not unless you press the keyboard again. So move should be false. I'm just looking for bugs in the details. I also want this transition to be short because it feels like lag to me right now. Much better. Another bug found. If I press jump while I'm in the landing motion, the character jumps again. That I do not want. So I'm going to go into idle. Once the character reaches idle state, you don't want to jump. Not unless you press jump again. So jump should be false once you go into idle state. And I want to change a few more things just to be safe. I'm going to go to the ground detector. And you should only be checking with raycast if the character is falling. So if the rigid body velocity y is below zero, that means the character is falling. That's the only time we should be checking with raycasting. And I want this range to be a little more precise, so 0 0.001. Let me go back to Unity. I'm going to look at the ground detector and change the check time to 20% and distance to be 0 0.05. This shouldn't make any difference. I just want to be safe. Because what happens sometimes is that as the player is jumping into the air, you somehow get the ground detector to say true, and then you immediately go into the landing motion, which you do not want, which could be disastrous for your game. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the jump script again. When you first enter jump state, grounded should be false. So we start with grounded is false, and then once the character jumps, you start checking for the ground with the ground detector, and then if it's true, that's when we get into the landing motion. And everything should be fine. Let me play again. All these options are up to you, but you should play around with it a lot and see what you like, and also check what works and what doesn't. For me right now, everything seems fine. 
I'm going to increase the number here and see what happens. Okay, I like that better. Exit play mode. I'm going to rename this to walk move forward, just to be clear. And let me rename some of the things. I'd like to organize them. Okay, looks like everything is clean. I'm going to make sure that there's nothing to apply for the character. So that's it for this video. Let me know if something doesn't work or if you have any questions because there's a lot of details in this. So don't be shy to reach out and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.